Welcome back everyone. Thank you for visiting the YouTube channel for bestbiblecommentaries.com. In this video, I'm going to show you some new releases in Bible commentaries and some new releases in biblical studies. I've actually gotten so many new releases lately that I'm going to need to divide it up into two videos. So this video and my next video will be on new releases, and then I will continue my series on uh, best Bible commentaries on each each book of the Bible. So if you like this comment, feel free to uh, hit the like button and subscribe if you want to, and feel free to leave a question or a comment if you want to. All right, the first book is called the Second Testament, and that's a, um, that's a reference to the New Testament. Subtitle is A New Translation by Scott McKnight. So I actually had this on the table of my last new release video, and um, I forgot to show it, so some of you let me know that in the comments, and so I wanted to make sure I show it at this time. This is from IVP Academic. The, the First Testament, or the Old Testament, uh, translation was released by John Golden Gay. I think it was earlier this year. So now we have the Second Testament by New Testament scholar Scott McKnight. So some of you will uh, know that name from the world of Bible commentaries and, and New Testament studies. He's pretty well known. So most English translations... Most popular English translations are the work of committees, and so there is, the publisher believes, and these scholars believe, that there is benefit from um, hearing translations or reading translations from a single individual. So I'll give you an example, John 3.16, for God loved the cosmos in such a way that he gave his only son, so everyone trusting in him may not be destroyed, but have era life, E-R-A space L-I-F-E. So there's all sorts of unique features to this commentary, and Scott McKnight talks about the in the preface to the book, um, and he also gives introductions to each book of the New Testament as well. Next up is a liturgy for the Christmas season by Jonathan Gibson. He wrote a liturgy um, that is called Be Thou My Vision, which has been very well reviewed. I actually don't have that book, uh, but I know that it's very well reviewed, and I don't believe it's seasonal. Someone can correct me on that if I'm wrong, but I don't believe that that one is seasonal. This one is seasonal. It's called O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, a liturgy for daily worship from Advent to Epiphany. Actually starts on November 28th. Uh, Jonathan Gibson is an ordained minister in the International Presbyterian Church in the UK and associate professor of Old Testament at Westminster Theological Seminary in Philadelphia. So even though Gibson is Presbyterian, I would say just broadly conservative evangelicals uh, would, any conservative evangelical would do do well with this, uh, would, would find benefit from this devotion. So I'll just show you briefly what it's like. So every every day has the same um, organization. So the first is meditation. You can see that. And in the red, it tells the reader, or the reader is giving guidance on what to do. So reflect on these words about the incarnation of the Lord Jesus. And then call to worship. So this section is usually written, is a quote from church history. The next section is from scripture, in this case, Ezekiel. Then there's adoration. So this is an Advent hymn that a person can say or speak. Then there is the reading of the law, confession of sin, assurance of pardon, the Nicene Creed. Different creeds are listed um, for each day. Praise catechism, prayer for illumination, scripture reading, praise, prayer of intercession, further petition, Lord's Prayer, benediction, and postlude. And that's, that's uh, December 10th. And then we move on to December 11th, and it's basically the same categories. So this is good for the individual, uh, a family, or a church. It would have applications for, for any of those settings. So again, it's called Okamu Okamu Manual. No reviews on it yet. It's too, it's too early. But the first one he did called Be Thou My Vision, which is this, a similar, uh, the similar format, uh, is very well reviewed. Next up from IVP is by Joanna Meyer. It's called Women, Work, and Calling. Step into your place in God's Word. So um, I have not read this, but Joanna Meyer is, she's a director of public engagement at Denver Institute for Faith and Work, and she has served as associate faculty for Denver Seminary. So uh, it's a book about Christian women, women and work and calling. Step into your place in God's world. 
Next up, also from IVP, is this book on holiness. The authors are Matt Ayers, Christopher T. Bounds, and Caleb T. Friedemann. Friedemann? Holiness, subtitle, a biblical, historical, and systematic theology. So there's three sections in the book, and they follow that, that outline of the, from the subtitle. I think there's, is that right? No, there's four. Um, there's four sections, but each of those subjects in the subtitles is uh, part of the book, and part four is a theology of holiness. So I noticed that all of the authors... So I'm not familiar with the authors, but it looks like they all have a background in the Wesleyan tradition. So this would be holiness, a discussion on holiness, teaching on holiness from the Wesleyan tradition. So for your consideration. All right. Uh, next up is the newest release by Rosaria Butterfield. Uh, the foreword is by Kevin D. Young. I actually finished Kevin D. Young's book on scripture just last week, so... Oh, it's very good, but not a part of this video. Uh, what is a part of this video is Five Lies of Our Anti-Christian Age by Rosaria Butterfield. Now, if you don't know who this is, the first thing that I would recommend you do is go watch her testimony on YouTube. So it's probably multiple places. She's given her testimony many times. I first heard it a few years ago um, when she spoke at a Ligonier Ministries conference and she gave her testimony and it was incredible. Um, very powerful. So I would encourage you to um, uh, YouTube that and then and then find her books. Um, this is her like her newest release, but I don't know. She maybe has like four or five books out now. Can't quite remember. Um, but people who blurb it are Joel Beakey, Alicia Childers. Is it Childers or Childers? Child, I think it's Childers. Uh, and Mark Jones. You might be familiar with some of those names. And this is from Crossway. Now, this is a book about women, um, but not, not just for women. So the brief description is modern culture fiercely distorts the true meaning of womanhood. Even some Christians have rejected God's word on issues of sexuality and gender in favor of popular opinion. It's time to separate fact from fiction and help women see the truth about who God created them to be. So um, I'm looking forward to, to reading this one, um, and I think you should consider it too. Five Lies of Our Anti-Christian Age. All right, next up, I'm call, it's kind of a commentary, sort of, and I'm really excited about this resource. So this is called Expository Outlines and Observations on Romans, subtitle, Hints and Helps for Preachers and Teachers, and this one is by, this is by uh, Rob Ventura, forward by Stephen Lawson. I just mentioned Ligonier Ministries, and Stephen Lawson does a lot with Ligonier Ministries. So Rob Ventura... Robin Ventura. Rob Ventura. Robin Ventura was a baseball player. Uh, Rob Ventura is one of the pastors of Grace Community Baptist Church in North Providence, Rhode Island. All right. So I would call this a great supplement to preaching and teaching through Romans. I don't think it will take the place of a commentary, but it's a great supplement to a commentary. So let me just pick a passage and show you how it works. So we have the text. So in this case, it would be Romans 7, 14 through 25. And then the same subheadings appear under every passage of Romans in the book. So first there is the general theme. You might call that the big idea. And then there's a homiletical outline of the verses. In this case, there's three. Paul's realization, Paul's confirmation, Paul's jubilation. So there's some rhyming there uh if uh you, if you would like to use that for your three-point sermon or yeah three-point sermons then there is a summary of the section and then there are exegetical and practical insights and they're noted as observations so observation number one from verse 14 observation number two from verses 14 through 21 and then there's an observation number three and four in this case Different passages have different numbers. And then there's the application section at the end. So every section ends with application suggestions for the church and, interestingly, for the non-Christian. So in this case, suggested applications from the text for the church. There's one suggestion, two suggestions, three suggestions, and then there's suggested application from the text for the non-Christian. So uh, that's that's a fascinating um, and interesting and fascinating to read those applications. 
so in most passages, the application for the church is usually, two, there's usually two or three of them. In the application for the non-Christian, there's usually just one. So um, this is, I believe this is the first book in, I hope this is going to be a series, Expository Outlines and Observations on Romans. I hope it's the first of many biblical books or all biblical books that are covered because I think this is going to be an excellent supplement um, for preachers and teachers. Next up is the newest release in the 40 Question series, which is on the Apostle Paul. The authors are Miguel, oh boy, Echevarria, Echevarria. Uh, he's an associate professor of New Testament and Greek at Southeastern Baptist Theological Seminary, and Benjamin Laird is associate professor of biblical studies at Liberty University. So I have not spent time with this book yet, but these three parts, 40 questions are divided into three parts, questions about Paul's life, questions about Paul's writings, and questions about Paul's theology. So, excellent series if you haven't tried it out yet. Next up is the newest release in the Zondervan Exegetical Commentary on the Old Testament series, and this is Habakkuk. I do like when minor prophets get their own book rather than in a series, rather than there being multiple minor prophets in a single uh, book. You know, that's okay. That's fine. But I just like it this way. I prefer it this way. Kenneth Turner is professor of Old Testament and biblical languages at, uh, I'm not sure how to say that, Tekoa Falls? Tekoa Falls College. Something like that. All right. So, uh, outstanding series. Daniel Block is the editor. Um, the layout, if you've seen my videos, you know that I just, I love this layout. It is so easy to find things in the, and every section in the layout, I think there's six or seven sections, is helpful. So I enjoy all of it. All right, so that's Habakkuk. Next up is the newest release in the Reformed Expository Commentary series by Richard Phillips, who I believe is also one of the editors of the series, if I remember correctly. But Genesis is in two, two volumes. The first volume covers chapters 1 through 19, and the second chapters 20 through 50. So I have not uh, read this these volumes yet, but one thing that interests me about Genesis commentaries is how much time and space, I should say, they devote to Genesis chapters 1 through 11. So it's such a unique book of scripture, and it's really important, not only to Genesis, but to the Old Testament and to the entire Bible. So I'm just, I'm interested to know um, that they don't go over that section too quickly. And I was not disappointed with these two volumes. So together, they are about 12 or 1300 pages and about 480 pages are devoted to chapters 1 through 11 so to me that's good news i like that you know to each their own on that but uh, that's something that i that i look for all right next up and lastly for this video is the replacement volume for Peter O'Brien's Hebrews commentary in the Pillar series. Um, it has now been replaced, the letter to the Hebrews, by, I'm not sure on this name, is it Sigurd? Sigurd Grindheim? That's my best guess. I apologize if I'm wrong. Uh, he is a professor in the Department of Pedagogy, Religion, and Social Studies at Western Norway University of Applied Sciences. I remember him look, looking him up earlier this year because I was not familiar with him, but I knew he was writing this volume. And if I remember correctly, he's done some teaching at Trinity Evangelical Divinity School. So um, that might be something that uh, the American watchers of the, this channel will be familiar with that school. So it's an enormous commentary. It is 814 pages in length. Um, I, I literally just got it a few days ago. And so... Uh, I have not spent a lot of time reading it. I can't tell you a lot about the, the theology. Uh, but I can tell you that now both of Peter O'Brien's commentaries in the Pillar series, Ephesians and Hebrews, have now been replaced. So if, uh, Ephesians came out earlier this year by Constantine Campbell, and now um, Dr. Greinheim, I'll call him, uh, has replaced the 
uh, has now written the replacement Hebrews volume, so which is excellent. This is a very popular commentary series. Many of the volumes, I think almost all of the volumes, have excellent reviews, and so it's important for them to replace um, O'Brien's commentaries. What still interests me, though, is that you know we're over 40 years into this series, I believe now, and still no Revelation volume. So I don't know why that is. Don't know who the author is. I've asked the publisher multiple times about that particular volume, if I could get any, any information on it, and, um, and they don't have information for me. So um, not necessarily their fault or anyone's fault, really. I'm just really curious and, and excited for it. So someday we will get that volume, I think. All right. I will see you next time. Feel free to leave a comment or ask a question.